Perfect. What are the five most dangerous moves in MMA? We all know the rules, but are there some moves that should be banned purely because they are so dangerous or can't even be practiced because they would actually put your partner's lives at risk? This is a list of the five most dangerous and painful moves in MMA. Number one, standing shoulder or elbow wrench. The reason this is so dangerous, guys, is because, watch this, as I grab old Josephine from here, he's got an underhook on me, I've got a whizzer, or an overhook, whatever you want to call it. Using this little cool bit in my arm here, I'm going to hit the back of his elbow tricep area. From here, I can rotate, which hits an immediate sort of Americana position, and I can just go wham, snap that shit to the ceiling, right? He hasn't got time to tap. Right? I don't know when to stop. So, say we're training, for instance, we're here. Oh, Joe, when are you gonna tap? Ah! Oh, oh, Probably right. wouldn't tap. In training, you'd be so focused on technique, you'd be working on good cage escape, you're working on good positioning, you aren't gonna start ripping your training partner's arms off. So, so I just kept my arm, Joe, this is, look. Really? Surgery, yeah, there you are. What, from doing mm. this? It's from this, yeah, the great one of this. I had the end of the hook, you went. Oh, bastard. Went, <laughs> bam, blew up, shit, what's for? That was a guy called Dan Charles, a heavyweight from Bellator. He was at um, the MMA Labs rival Combat Sports Arizona, where Henry Zahudo trains. Wanker. Nice <laughs> guy, but cut for doing that. Yeah. The yeah. other way, right, so we're going to count this as the same move, right, because it all depends on how you catch it. Now, when I go this way, I roll the arm, there's a bit of flexion. You see it, there's a bit of rotation. I can move Joe's arm. The fight. It's hard to tell. Now, if you want to be a, uh, what's it, Sergeant Slaughter's <laughs> older brother, Captain Cunchops, if you want to do this now, catch the back of the arm here. Bang! Here, bang! As they hit it, watch this. The back of the arm is locked with my elbow, or my forearm, and it goes boom! So it's like an instant armbar. It's like an armbar without any hold. Yeah, no. Normally when you get an armbar, right, you hold it, you wait for your opponent to tap. This one you go, bang! You snap it in. That's why it's so dangerous. But I don't think it should be banned. It's just, you can't do it in training. And that's but the that's issue. why it's also not hardly used, because it's not no part can do of it. repertoire. It's all about remembering it. This one, I mean, you could get away and train it a little bit. Oh, oh, oh you got it, oh, I let go. But this one is like, ah. <laughs> Arm broke, so well, it's not actually. No, it's not a break. Actually, I've seen it done. Actually, dislocates the elbow and pfft, rips everything else out on the way out. Definitely not fun. Let's see what else is on the list. Number two, the inverted heel hook. Grobe's in agony, and this is why. Look at this heel hook. I think he snapped his leg. Oh man, his knee popped out there. Uh, an inside heel hook. When the heel hook goes across the body like that, it's even more dangerous. Now Soto gonna look for the heel hook, he's got this locked up. That's tight! Chuck Soto! An extended layoff in advance of this one, but still keeping a more active schedule than normal. Oh, that's oh, tight! Ryan Hunt submits oh, PJ Penn in a blink! Oh my goodness. This probably looks like a bunch of spaghetti to you. All of our legs tied inside each other. In fact, when I first started, this looked impossible. I mean, look, I'm seeing more knees than there should be here. I don't even know what's going on. However, as you get more experience, you realize I'm actually in a nice hill hook position here. This, I find, is the worst type of hill hook, right? See this here? That's his hill. If I grab that hill now, bury over it, lock up. I've controlled this leg, and I'm led on this leg here. Now, I've isolated this. Now it's time to rip apart all of his ACL, LCL, and MCL. From here, Oh, Joe can't tap because he's got the camera at the moment for POV position. Here, <laughs> instant tap. And the worst bit is, they say you can't feel the pain till it's too late. And that's why this move is, it shouldn't be banned, it should be allowed to use. But in training, what I recommend to everyone is, you hold the move, you look at your partner and you both agree, yes, you've got it, 
before you start going, Rah! and when you do this move, guys, you never just turn towards it, you look over your opposite shoulder, here, that's not on instantly, when I do this, I can feel Joe tap instantly, boom. Number three, guillotine neck cranks. This next move, I actually pulled off something very similar, and I was the first person to do it in UFC. I call it the 10 finger guillotine. Watch this. I go one, two, this is my grip. Under his neck, up, and I crank and pull up. Now, it's not exactly the same one, but I have to blow my own trumpet a little bit once in a while. The move I actually want to show you is even a little bit even worse than that where I'm going to slap his head down. This could start off on the ground on all fours. It could start from anywhere, right? Now, what I do, I come here. I get a front headlock, a wrestling front headlock. Excuse all the, all the American wrestlers out there. It's like your hips aren't high enough, your chest too low. Yeah, we're demonstrating, right? Come the fuck down. Now, my right hand goes across his face. You can see this, right? Now I lock this shit up to here. And I step my hips in. Yeah. Right now, what I've done deliberately <laughs> to be nice, it's so me. as I'm letting him turn. In reality, I just drive straight in. Sure. And I force himself Jesus Christ. into here. It's not a nice submission. Right. There's another variation of this as well. From here, I can go across his chin, grab my own hand, grab the top so of his shoulder. Jesus Christ. Grab the top of his shoulder and do the same. Oh, no. See this? Like a figure of four. On his neck. I'll do it a little bit softer because it is so painful and it is dangerous, right? I go across his neck. I come here. No here. neck, no neck should be in this position. Now if I actually hold him this tight, that would be an oh, instant Jesus submission. Christ. Especially using the cage behind. Yeah, I've got nowhere to go. No There's, to go. Go. <laughs> There's also other variations to this move, right? Where I can do this same thing. Going across his neck here. Right, coming on the inside of the leg and then dropping in. Oh. Just to make it that little bit worse. Mm. I used to love these sort of submissions, guys. I got taught, believe it or not, the story was I was at the Ulmer Fighter Trials. Uh, a guy I was on the Ulmer Fighter with called Mike Wilkinson, one of his training partners, taught me this move actually while we were in trials. He didn't get in, I did, so I feel a bit bad. So he knew, I genuinely believe he was far. Superior than I was in grappling, but who's in it? You know, who cares? I got any, didn't. Tough shit. <laughs> Number four, the esteema lock. <laughs> Next up, then, we've got the esteema lock. Now, obviously, made famous by Brolio Esteema, or the way I pronounce it, Braulio. We're going to do it for MMA, obviously being an MMA fighter, I don't really care too much about competition jiu-jitsu. I like the idea of being able to smash someone's face and one on the ground. However, you're taught to keep separation. You're caught to push away here. So Joe could be here looking for some form of like half guard. Sorry for my terminology, I just don't care anymore. All right, so his foot's on his side, here. On my chest. Rear naked choke grip. Lock it up, sit. Now, it's really hard to show you how bad this is. What I'm actually doing is, I'm, see this lock? Imagine I've still got that lock. Drop my bum in, and I push my big gut, beer belly into it. Here, here, drop. Instant sub, yeah? I'm separating his foot from his ankle. All I'm doing is this, one. All right, now I'm doing it at an angle here. You see, this foot here is not designed to be going that far. I'm forcing it down to the back of his asshole. Here, one, lock, two. It's a very dangerous move. See, what happens is, if they don't tap, it separates the foot from the ankle, right? If you don't, if you don't believe me, check out Adam Jones, Craig Jones' brother. I used to train with him madly. Check out his foot. 
he literally has it dislocated, separated from his ankle. And, well, he probably did tap it on him, but it's one of those moves you don't want to fuck around with. Number five, the oblique kick. The reason I don't like this next move is because when you get one set of knees, I've already blown one of mine up. Luckily, the UFC, money, 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 give it to me, they got a little bit of dollar behind them and they paid for it. And I've got some poor guy that is deceased. I've got his uh, ACL on my leg. But this is one of the reasons why I don't like this move. Watch this. So, this is the only move I genuinely believe should be made illegal. They should even bring back in soccer kicks. There's two ways of doing this move. You've got the inside way, bang. Well, they come in and they stamp him on the knee. Then you've got the nasty way. Here, boom. Now, when you watch John Jones do this, he actually hops in, boom, strains his leg. Now, Joe, come here. When I come in and kick him, watch, his foot is locked to the ground. From here, I'm going to come in and I'm kicking this. Now, the weight is here. I'm locking it on his back heel. When I push, he's got nowhere to go. Similar to a knee bar, but the difference is, when I push here, yeah, Joe Farley's gonna give away and he fall down. But he can't fall down faster than my kick. That's the issue, that's why the injury is so bad. If I go, bang, that's faster than Joe kick. Up, bang, stamp. All right, if it wasn't for the fight I was doing that slow motion, wrong, Joe would have hit the deck. So there you have it guys. What do you think are the most dangerous and painful moves in the UFC? Brad is giving us his list, they must be dangerous for a reason. There are a few we missed off that are also really painful, like calf pressures, wrist locks, finger locks, eye gouges, rear naked anal slam, bum plugging, all of that. You know, we, we, we missed don't that see many of those in the US. We don't see many of them in the US, <laughs> so we don't really bring on. I know Brett Johns from Swansea, who's only a couple of hours away from us, has hit the bicep slicer, but it's as rare as rock and all shit. Please make sure you subscribe to the channel, also like the video, share it with your friends if you really enjoyed it. Make sure you comment as well if you have any ideas for any videos you'd like us to do. Make sure you check out all of our WWE series. We're currently at the semi-finals. Make sure you check that out right now. But for now, guys, we hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you next time. Peace out. Give me your money.